All right, this video is in response to a viewer who asked a question about my consumer theory worksheet and, and series of videos that I made. And it regarded one simplification about uh, when you're going from the Hicksian demand function to an expenditure function. Uh, the viewer said he understood that what you do is you plug in the optimal x you know, compensated amount of X for the Hicksian demand into the budget equation and the optimal uh, compensated amount of Y or the Y star uh, into the budget equation to get what we call the expenditure function. But what he couldn't quite figure out is how do we get from this expression on the left to simplify it down to this nicer, simpler looking expression on the right? Now, the first answer is, how did I actually do this? I actually used Maple, which is a symbolic algebra program, and I just told Maple to simplify it, and it did. Um, however, I, it, that's kind of a lazy answer when somebody asks you, how do you get from this equation to this one over here? So let me show you how you can do it. And it took me a couple of minutes of looking at this to figure this out. But let me just show you the trick uh, to, that you can use here. Um, First, let me rewrite this, this expression. So it's not really an equation, it's an expression here on the left, and that's, that's important when you're working with it uh, to recognize that, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. But uh, let me just rewrite this. Let me do two things. The first thing, let me pull the U bars out to the front here because it, uh, they occur in both uh, parts of this expression here. So just, just put that out front to get it out of the way. Uh, and then the second thing that I've already done here down below is I've just taken this first part, first half, and I have written everything explicitly. So I haven't grouped any of the variables. I've written everything out. So this P to the X is here to the first power. Uh, I put it in the numerator with, point th with 3 to the 0.7 power right here, PY to the 0.7 power, and then the denominator, <clears throat> 7 to the 0.7 power, and the price of X to the 0.7 power. So everything's explicitly written out there. I did the second, the same thing with the second term here. I just explicitly wrote the powers and separated everything out. This will make it slightly easier to group things uh, back when we start working with it in a minute. Now, what we're going to have to do, obviously, in order to get from the expression on the left to the expression on the right, is we're going to have to add these two terms, right? Now, going back to your math class that you must have had, and I must have had, sometime when we were 10 or 11 or 12 years old, 13 years old, uh, if you have two fractions like this that you want to add, what you have to do is come up with a common denominator, right? So if, if you had, let's just take the simple case, if you had one-third plus one-fourth and you want to add them, in order to add them, you have to come up with a common denominator. And the easiest way to do that is to just multiply the one-third by the denominator over here, four. So you multiply one-third by four-fourths, right, which is multiplying it by one. You multiply the one-fourth by three-thirds, which is multiplying that by one. And by doing that, you'll get a common denominator. And you get four times one is four, three times four is 12. And you'll get the same denominator over here. But one times three is three and 12 on the bottom. So you'd, you'd figure out that this has got to be seven-twelfths. It's the same principle that we're going to use here with these much more ugly, much more complicated expressions. So what we're going to do is, to the expression on the left, we're going to multiply it by 1. But the 1 we're going to multiply it by is this denominator over itself. So we're going to multiply it by 3 to the point 0.3 times PY to the point 0.3 divided by 3 to the point 0.3 times PY to the point 3. And then on the right hand side we're going to do the same kind of thing except we're going to multiply using this denominator over itself. So we're going to multiply that times 7 to the point 7 times PX to the point 7 and then the same thing on the 
denominators because we have to multiply each part of this expression by 1. So px to the 0.7. So the same thing on the top and the bottom. We're just multiplying the top and the bottom by 1. Now, take a minute. If you really want to do this, pause the video and see what starts to cancel and what starts to simplify here. And then I'll show you the next step. Okay. Hopefully you took the time to actually work through this because practice makes perfect here. So when you start uh, simplifying this, uh, you when you collect all the terms here on the left hand side we'll get let's keep our u bar out front here uh, you get px times 3 to the first times py in the numerator and then you get this ugly ugly looking denominator here 7 to the point 7 px to the point 7 uh, 3 to the point 3 uh, py to the point 3, right? But then the other expression, it's going to have the same common denominator down here. 7 to the point 7, px to the point 7, 3 to the point 3, py to the point 3. But in the numerator, you should end up, when you simplify everything up top here, you should end up with py times 7 times px. So when you combine those two expressions together, in the numerator what you're going to get is 3px times py plus 7px times py equals 10px py. Okay? And then that's times u bar and then you've got that ugly looking whoop, ugly looking denominator that you're going to have to work with 7 to the point 7 px to the point 7 3 to the point 3 py to the point 3 okay uh, and i think that's that what i've just shown you there is kind of the the most difficult step in getting this expression to look like the, the simple one, uh, which you're going to end up getting 10 u bar. You see where the 10 and the u bar come from here, uh, times py over 7 to the point 7 times px over 3 to the point 3. Um, once you get to this point, I think you can figure out how you can rearrange these terms to get it to look something like this. Okay? Now, if you have additional questions, let me know. But the trick here is finding a common denominator. And quite often, when you're working with ugly, ugly uh, expressions like this, the trick of finding a common denominator can help you see how a lot of things are going to be able to collect and cancel and simplify your life. So if you have any other questions or if you want to see me do this last step or, or you know, how can we get between this part and this part, I'd be happy to. But I think that part should be clear to most of you. But if you have questions and you want to see it, let me know. Otherwise, this is Berkey Academy signing out. And if you have other questions, please let me know because I love this kind of question uh, where it forces me to look at, at what I've done and make sure that I can explain it rather than just skipping over it. Good luck with your economic studies, guys.